Hey guys, it's the July Lioness. How are you doing tonight? I'm rocking on here. <laughs> this is Chaco Chat for Saturday, July 25th, 2015. And I've got, uh, it's, it's uh, 11.20 p.m. So it's just barely July 25th. <laughs> so this probably won't, you won't see this until the 26th. But guess what? Oh boy, here comes Darla. Here's Darla. Oh, it's my birthday on Tuesday. What are you going to get me, Darla? Are you going to get me a nice bone or something? Uh-oh, did I give that away? Are you and the cats planning something for my birthday? You going to bake a cake for me? You're not going to get dog hair in it, are you? Hmm. So hello from Darla and me. Are the cats are around somewhere. So let's see what's going on. What happened this week, Darla? I know. Um, this just continues to be prohibitively hot out there for a bike rider who does someone who does not own an air conditioned car. So Thursdays I like to do my laundry, but I've had to wait until so late in the day that I'm racing the darkness you know, waiting for it to cool off. There's also a, a show I like to watch on Thursday. So it's such a, a race that um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to move my laundry day to Wednesdays. I didn't actually do get to the laundromat this week. Instead, I just washed some stuff out in the bathtub and um, put it on my, put it on my clothesline to dry because I don't have a washer dryer in the house. And usually I like going to the laundromat, except when, except when I have ah, weather problems. Don't put your paw in that particular place, please, Miss Darla. But uh, there was a time, a period of time when I, for about six months there, I think, I always did my laundry just in the bathtub and hung it on the clothesline because I didn't have the money for the to take it to the laundromat and it's fine for a while but it, yeah, I think it's pretty hard on your clothes if you do it over a long period of time oh, excuse me but uh, I do have a big bunch of clothes to should be put through the machine and what I probably I there it's very heavy and I'm mulling over whether I'll take it over in my pedicab, which I'm a little uncomfortable riding. Um, I'm not used to it. It's a little overwhelming for me. I hate cars. And this is kind of like a car. But I can kind of get used to that, but the problem really is that it's very conspicuous. And it really attracts people to coming up and wanting to talk to me and ask me questions and I don't like that <laughs> I know it's weird everybody else probably would would love how it's such a uh, uh, what do you call it a conversation starter uh, but I don't <laughs> I, I'm um, not much of a people person and I especially don't I'm not really impressed with the people around here that I've met I just don't like them very much and I'm not sorry I'm just not real interested in talking to them and I'm not interested in answering a lot of questions and they're very nosy people they don't introduce themselves they don't say who they are they just immediately start asking you a bunch of nosy questions like they're entitled or something and um, it's all ages do this, kids and adults. I've had kids come to my house to ask me questions about the pedicab because they see it, it parked in the carport, so they don't see any reason why they can't just barge on over. And, and you know, I just think it's very inconsiderate. And they were not raised to respect other people's privacy, I guess. And uh, I have a problem with that. Yeah, uh, I wasn't raised that way. I was raised 
speak when you're spoken to, don't talk to strangers. Uh, if you're gonna have to, if you do need to speak to someone that you don't know, if you don't have a mutual friend who can introduce you, then introduce yourself. But always, in, if you're going to speak to someone and you really have a more than just like, hi, you know, if, if you have a real topic that you need to discuss with them, then you need to say who you are and what your business is, you know, and instead of just, and I would never go barging up to somebody's, the house of some stranger. For me, I mean, not only is it rude to the stranger, but it's also, it would be a safety issue for me. You know, I think about in the 70s going trick-or-treating. Boy, we were trusting. We were so trusting back then. Oh, my God. I guess we just, it's, you know, it's everything sort of going down, going downhill. <laughs> uh... Maybe it's just because my birthday is coming. I'm getting a little gloomy in my my old age. So anyway, um, Thursday, some old friends were in town, and they came over here. And we had lunch, and, and I visited for a couple hours, and then they were gone. So that was fun, but, you know, it's kind of sad because I miss them. They, they're nice people and they don't live, they live many hundreds of miles away, other side of the country, down kind of around California area, out west. <clears throat> and they're just so, so different from the, the locals. <laughs> I mean, these people I actually respect and I have things I can talk to them about. The locals are just not, they're just not real, not my type of folks. Okay, yeah, I'm a snob. I was raised to be a snob. <laughs> my mother was a snob. It's hard for snobs, you know, because where do we find the other snobs? I don't know, because they're so snobbish, they don't want to meet new people. <laughs> Because they're snobs, even if it's to meet new snobs, they don't know they're snobs until they get to until they meet them. So it's 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 a catch twenty two. Uh, oh well. <laughs> so anyway, it was fun to to catch up with them and oh excuse me, they were um, they were the ones that helped paint this this room I was telling you about last time or the time before that. So anyway, yeah, I've been, I mentioned last time I was developing the Hazagram and I believe I showed you some. So here I've been working on some more. This is the smaller one, but you open it up and you write in it. But I've been, I decorated, I, this was, yeah, I drew this little design myself, so I just think it's rat purdy. It's funny in this light; it looks this looks very white in the, on here. Yeah, it must be reflecting off the screen. But this is actually kind of a taupe. Oh, it's in the inside. Yeah, there. I drew this little pink and brown border because the paper is kind of tan. I'm never very good at showing things on the webcam because I don't, especially because I can't see through this to know if I'm lined up or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, this is pink and pink and brown flowers. And this is a bluish one. I haven't added the, the hand-drawn design yet. So, but I, this is a kind of beige paper cardstock spritzed with blue ink. And I'll do another kind of a border that hook matches up. And then you open it up and it's plain. So I will do, I will be adding to that. 
But mostly it's getting them to fold flat. That's the, the first step. This one is kind of, I think this is sort of pinks and blues. You see it pretty clearly. And then it folds up like that. But yeah, these are called hasograms, and I'll be writing to my pen pals on these, so we'll get them out into the world on, in, a in a variety of ways. My, I only have two pen pals because I'm a snob. <laughs> um, and both of them use write on their computer, but uh, so I don't know if they would handwrite. I especially like this one. I don't know if they would handwrite or uh, I need to test to see if this fits in my in my typewriter. Remember typewriters? Yeah, I got one of those too. But yeah, see what you do is you spritz all on one side of the paper and then you know the rest is, is folded and then I'll do some kind of a design along one edge the way I did with this one. This is a smaller one. It's only got the folded uh, ones, like one sheet. So that would be for something shorter. And this is the little kind of ocean waves on the side there, which will connect up on the back and when you lift up the flap it's, it's also there. So it's fun making the designs line up. So this little area here isn't necessary. to do. And here's another another one for shorter letters. This would certainly fit in a typewriter. <laughs> if you have one, if anybody has typewriters anymore. Some there's like people who are on like retro cakes, man. Isn't that sad retro god? And that's like a nice pink border along the edges. I like pink. Yeah, and this was all done with, yeah, all these were made with Stampin' Up! supplies. They have Stampin' Up! markers spritzed with the same Stampin' Up! ink, which is the same color as the markers. Stampin' Up! cardstock, and this is the pink from a marker, which I could also spritz it with this pink ink. So it all coordinates, which I really like. And I did not make a video yet about how Stampin' Up! has color is so, excuse me, color coordinated. I haven't been feeling too terrific the past few days. I've been very, very uncomfortable. So I haven't been able, I haven't slept very well. Um, my back's been bothering me. So I seem to get the most, the best rest by sleeping in my other blue recliner, which is in the other room here. So what I've been doing the past couple of nights is trying to sleep on my bed, but it just is very, very painful. So I'll put up with that for as long as I can. And then I, Darla's scratching herself, sorry. Then I'll uh, move over to the blue recliner and like today I guess I slept about two hours in my bed and then another four or so in the recliner and you know I just haven't done much today because it it hurts to to bend over you know it's I'm at the, I can't believe I'm at the age where I I have to worry about bending getting in and out of the bathtub bending down to pick up something. Uh, if I have to sit on the floor, <laughs> I'll sit there and do what I need to do for a while 
And then, oh, I have to get up now. Uh, I have to think about it. And the best thing I can do if I think ahead is have a chair, like a folding chair near me, and then I can kind of crawl onto that sort of, isn't that pathetic? <laughs> oh. uh, but it's okay. A couple years ago when I was ripping out all the carpeting, I would, was sitting on the floor a lot, and which Darla, Darla and the cats loved, of course, because I was down on their level and they could watch what I was doing. And Darla especially liked helping me rip the carpet off the floor, didn't you? You remember, you remember all our carpet ripping, didn't you? You were so good at that. And she was really, you know, maybe a year old then. So she was just my very talented rug ripper puppy, weren't you? Remember? You remember when we were pulling all those rugs up? We would do it piecemeal. So every, I, you know, we do one room and then let it be for a couple months and then get started on another room until bit by bit, oh, we get all those rugs pulled up. All that yucky beige carpeting, that stank. And you pull it up and it had all like the, the disintegrating foam padding underneath and half of it would be stuck to the floor. And there would be just mounds of, of like sand, dust that, you know, if, if you think wall-to-wall -wall carpeting actually stops dirt you're wrong it just collects it and that mat that fiber it's porous so it all just goes right through to what is whatever is underneath the carpeting whatever like your the if you had maybe hardwood underneath it's all on the hardwood floor or the um what you call it subflooring or, or cement Whatever, whenever you do eventually pull up the carpeting, all your dirt's going to be under there. <laughs> it's all collected. Vacuum cleaners, I don't think they make a more powerful enough vacuum cleaner to actually suck dirt up through carpeting, like from like the subflooring and into the vacuum. I just don't think they make powerful enough vacuums for that. And also for dog hair. I swear that stuff, it sticks. It must have like little teeth on it because dog hair sticks to everything. It's just murder to clean up. And cat hair is very fluffy and light. That's where the, what dust bunnies are made of. I think they're made of cat hair. So this, this is, uh, this house I think is, is tidy but I wouldn't say it's awfully clean. <laughs> and that's, you know, when you have pets, that's, it's a trade-off. Do you want an immaculate house? Okay, you have to choose between an immaculate house and pets, because you're never gonna have an immaculate house and have pets. I don't care if you've got a cleaning crew on it 24 seven. Dogs and cats and people we all shed. We shed hair. We shed skin cells. There's no, no such thing as immaculate, really. I really don't think so. Nope. So anyway, um, I just because of this pain, I haven't done a whole lot of moving around, and I've been switching what chairs I sit in because some are more comfortable than others, and just been kind of uncomfortable. So for my birthday, Tuesday, if I'm up to it and if the weather is not terrible, roasting, you know, if I'm up to going out, I'd like to maybe get my hair done or I saw a sign for I think there's a new, some sort of a studio, art studio? I'm not sure, something about classes though. There was a sign about classes possibly in art about two doors down from the grocery store. So um, when I do get around to 
my laundry run, either on the bike or on the pedicab, have haven't crossed that bridge when I come to it. But I do want to get find get more information on that um, art class or whatever it is. Because if it is an art class, ooh, that would be so much fun. I'd love to take an art class. That was always my favorite subject in school. And you know, I like, I'm like creative, you know? <laughs> so that would chirk up my day. There's so little to do around here. It's just a real backward little southern town. And all they do is either hang out on the farm or go to church. And I don't do either of those. <laughs> I, I try churches. I can't. The only one that I would like to, I wouldn't mind attending regularly is one that I cannot access. Yeah, I don't have a ride there. I don't know anybody who goes there that I could carpool with. I tried to find somebody that I could carpool with and nothing happened. So what I might end up doing is my parents and I went to the Episcopal Church when I was really little. And I went to that to an Episcopal service I guess about a year ago and I didn't love it but I was very comfortable with it it was very familiar to me and it's sort of my idea of what church should be like which is you know kind of <laughs> quiet and formal and boring yay church that's my idea of church <laughs> I'm not a, one of those, oh dear, I'm, you know, conservative. Oh, we'll leave it at that. And the people that I go there probably won't speak to me because they're snobs. Yeah, I'll be right at home. <laughs> I can just quietly go and listen to the service and not be bothered by anybody. And then I can just go home and I'll just... I could, it's just a matter of getting a cab to actually drop me off and pick me up. The, you know, cabs are not reliable and overpriced and, oh, I dream of the perfect cab. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Uh, well, the grass needs to be mowed again and nothing new with the tree, just it's still dead in the backyard <laughs> okay sims 4 uh, I have had some defeats and some triumphs I was <clears throat> rolling right along there I had several families up and running several households going and we were had the plot lines uh, going and people were having babies and people were were getting old and Ferd Burfold died of old age in a park and so I found the, saw the Grim Reaper. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> that was pretty creepy. Poor old Ferd. He was, <clears throat> you know, when they get old they just are always uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, uncomfortable. You keep getting that message. Uncomfortable and kind of just, yeah, you know, just sad you know they're because they're just kind of done so I knew his time was drawing near so I wanted to do like maybe one final thing to kind of cheer up the poor guy so I took him to this park where they said there's a cow plant which is this really unique plant that's got the head of a cow and it's it's very it's typically strange <laughs> I had heard through watching other people's videos that if you go to this particular park uh, and go fishing, you might you get a cow plant berry from fishing in this particular pond. That's the most likely place to get them. They're very rare. Uh, so I took Ferd over to this particular park and we went fishing for cow plant berries and just fishing in general because they always 
it's amazing how the Sims are fishing fans. So he was kind of happy, but he was uncomfortable and he was getting tired and he wanted something to eat. So we walked over, I walked him over to the bench and he had just grilled up some veggie burgers and there was this young guy there and so the guy joined Ferd for a meal and Ferd had about I think two bites of his veggie burger and just fell over right on the ground right there at the park and this poor guy he's like <gasps> You know, he's upset and, he, you know, oh my God, oh my God. Because Ferd's not moving and, of course, I'm trying to get him to interact with me to wake him up or something or, you know, get him to move and he, no interactions available. So, the Grim Reaper <laughs> materialized like, ah, and I'm flashing on Monty Python, The Meaning of Life, the segment from the Grim Reaper, because there he is with the scythe and the black cloak and everything. But he didn't, he wasn't a skeleton, he had human hands. But I think they were black. And you can't see the face, it's, uh, you know, buried somewhere in this hood. And he's just, the Grim Reaper appeared, and he stood up, stood up in the distance a little ways, and he started floating towards Ferd. And I thought there was a way you could click on the Grim Reaper and beg him, plea for an extension or something. They mentioned that in videos. But I couldn't get that to happen. And I thought, well, this, he's had a long life. Why would I, you know, his death is not untimely. He's just died of old age. So I let him go, uh, released him into the netherworld. And his, um, an urn appeared. Oh, it was sad though. Oh, it was so sad. It makes you cry. Uh, and his roommate, Tyrone, had no idea what was going on until the next morning I took Tyrone back to the park. And he saw the urn and he mourned. Oh, it was so sad. So anyway, I was getting, I got all this, 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 this way in the storyline and I had actually Tyrone had moved on he met Gladys they got married they had a baby and Tyrone's sister had come to live with them to help out with the baby and every time Tyrone's sister saw Ferd's urn she got went became absolutely despondent and she never even met Ferd you know it's just that but that's a Sims thing that's one of the the, the, you know, there's also always a person who just won't stop mourning whether they knew that person or not. Um, so eventually I, I just had to put the urn in, um, in Tyrone's inventory to make it disappear. I think that's what I did. But there, I, no, I didn't. I put the, there was a, I put it outside and the urn became a tombstone. So now this lady, his sister, is going outside all the time to mourn over the tombstone. Like, oh my God, lady, get a grip! <laughs> and I think, I think that's when I moved the tombstone into Tyrone's inventory. So anyway, I had all this going on, and I was visiting with the Farkel family, blah blah blah, and I switched over. I switched around a household and was playing it. This couple got a divorce and I had to move the ex-wife in with somebody else. And it was, the game was fine when initially when I came back, but then I went to play another house in the same game and all the houses were gone. The Sims were standing out there on their empty lots. No houses anywhere. No houses to be seen. Huge game glitch. I'm, oh, I can't believe it. I spent so much time building those houses and furnishing them and adding rooms and adding beds and you know, all, of the, all this work. I had a cow plant. 
that was growing. I found found a cow plant berry with another household. It was coming up. And they were, it just was gone, completely gone. And I uh, went on the Sims forums to find out what was going on. And a lot of other people had the same problem. They don't know what causes it yet. They haven't put out a patch for that yet. So it's gone. All those hours were gone. Gone, gone, gone. I lost my cow plant. Oh, so I'll have to get another one from somewhere. But, uh, uh, so I was disgusted and I actually deleted my games because I would have had to rebuild all the lots and everything. And I thought, I'm just going to start fresh. I've still got my Sims. They were all saved to my gallery and even are uh, available for download, some of them. So I just am starting over from scratch. And also, I've been wanting to for a long time. I mentioned this, I think. Um, when you get a game from Origin and Steam, they download it into your, onto your C drive. And I didn't know that you could specify what drive when I downloaded them. So I had these games on my C drive and they were getting really bogged down. And for a long time, I've been wanting to move them over to my expansion drive. Uh, which is an external hard drive. It's got almost two terabytes on it. I bought it specifically to store games on. So today I went um, digging around and I found on YouTube a couple of tutorials that were just great. It says here, I found this really good one where this guy says, here is how you move your origin games from one drive to another. So I watched the video, I wrote it all down in my little notebook. I now have notes and I followed these notes to the letter, you bet. And I now have Sims 4 on my F drive, yeah, Woo. and so if that happens again with the houses vanishing, it's not because of lack of memory, that's for sure. It's going to be a some glitch that EA has created. It's going to be a game glitch and it's not going to be a storage issue. Nope. So now I've got other games that I might move over, but they're on Steam. And they, so I'm going to have to, it's a different process to move them over from Steam, but um, with Origin, it's your what you actually do is go into your C program files and cut that file and from C and paste it into a folder that you've created on the, your other drive. In in my case, F. So the the concept is pretty easy, but it is a little the process is a bit meticulous, and you have to really follow it follow the instructions to the letter and not be intimidated by all these scary inside computer programming jargon things that yeah. <laughs> it's like unexplored territory for me to go into my program files. I don't generally, I don't, I don't mess around with my computer. I just use it. So I'm not a programmer, but you pick up stuff. When I started online in 97, the only way you could build a web page was to use HTML coding. There were no templates or anything that you could use. You had to write out the coding exactly how you wanted it, and then you would upload it onto a blank editor. And so if you had any coding errors, it would show up on your web page and you would have to go back into the editor and find your mistake and fix it. So this years ago, I had a notebook for all my HTML coding. I don't use it anymore. It, I don't have the notebook anymore. It's obsolete. Um, you don't need to, you obviously don't. 
create web pages like that anymore. It's all done with templates and stuff. It's, you know, I think they added like a set another layer. So the coding, the HTML coding is still in there, but it's not for you to edit. That's done by the, you know, the company that, that offers the website, I guess. Unless you're a professional web designer, then that's a whole other thing. So anyway, yeah, I think I've said everything. I haven't heard from the lady I sent the prize to. I hope she liked it. Um, and I mailed my birthday present to my friend. Her birthday was the 22nd. Hope it made it in time and I hope she liked it. I th hopefully she will send me a birthday card and mention mentioned the gift in in her card so anyway guys it's pretty late and uh i've been rebuilding the sims <laughs> so i think uh, i'm gonna get back to that or maybe watch a movie i haven't decided yet it depends on how i'm feeling you know if i feel comfortable enough that i think i could get some sleep then i might go and get some sleep. Usually what happens is I start to lie down and I'll get a little bit of rest but then either it'll be start hurting again or I'll get ideas for the sims that won't leave me alone and sometimes both so I just have to play it by ear. So thanks for stopping over guys. This has been the July Lioness and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks guys. Bye.